How accurate are Apple watches in detecting atrial fibrillation? So lots of people are having Apple watches these days. It's a very trendy, cool gadget to have. Well, it can detect atrial fibrillation, the most common abnormal heart rhythm out there. But how accurate are Apple watches at actually detecting atrial fibrillation? And is that really true? And is it useful? Should one consider buying one or not? There are many smartwatches out these days that can do similar things to the Apple Watch. So the question becomes, should I invest in this? Is it going to diagnose my AFib? Is it going to help me? So let's really talk about what these smartwatches do and whether or not that can really help you diagnose AFib and how accurate are we talking about. So we did talk about how the heart runs on electricity. It's just a dumb muscle. Every time it gets a signal, it beats. So it's not gonna beat without an electrical signal, just like a frog leg. You don't zap it with electrical signal from a battery and a little electrical wire. It's not gonna move. It's not gonna magically move. Your heart's not gonna magically move unless it's stimulated by electricity. The question is always, what is in control of your heart? Where is the electricity coming from? Is it your normal source at the roof of your heart that's supposed to be sending out electricity controlling your heart and it sends out electricity at the speed your brain wants? Or is it an abnormal source like the most common one, atrial fibrillation. The way to really diagnose this would be an EKG. These are little electrodes that you get put on in the office and it's on your chest, and it's actually sensing the electricity through your chest walls that are flowing inside your heart, and it depicts it as squiggly little lines. So you see the boop, boop on the monitor, like in the hospital, the boop, boop, but an EKG sees that from multiple viewpoints because there's 12 actual leads on your body. And so almost like looking at your heart from a different direction, you can actually sense directionality. And for those of us who've been trained properly to do this, we can actually tell which wall of your heart the electricity is coming from. So we know what source of electricity is actually in control of your heart. And by the way, people read EKGs at different levels. It's really difficult to interpret where the electricity is coming from just based on how the squiggly little line looks. That's why a primary care doctor or emergency room doctor is gonna read it at one level, a regular cardiologist is gonna read it at a higher level, and then those of us who've done three years cardiology fellowship and two years electrophysiology fellowship are gonna read it at an even higher level. So we wanna find out who's in control. Is it an abnormal rhythm like AFib coming from the left upper chamber of your heart where AFib cells are located, or is it your normal rhythm? Well, the EKG is the best way of doing that because if we can catch your symptoms and you really are in AFib at that moment, I can accurately interpret that and say, yes, 100%, you're in atrial fibrillation. AFib's not the hardest rhythm to actually interpret as well, but you always have to make sure that the person who's interpreting your EKG is actually doing a good job to interpret it and not just cheating and reading computer interpretation at the top of the EKG, because there is a little computer interpretation at the top of the EKG, and the computer's not that smart, so it could be wrong like 30% of the time, so just always make sure that it's overbed by a cardiac electrophysiologist, or at least a cardiologist. So that's probably the most accurate way. And then we do have long-term monitors that can try to catch your heart rhythm. But it's become very easy these days to try to catch it with smartwatches. Now, you have to be careful as to what type of smartwatch you have. Some smartwatches, a standard smartwatch, doesn't actually record actual electrical rhythm tracings. It's not sensing the electricity directly in your heart like an EKG does. It's just measuring your heart rate. So it's kind of measuring like what you would with a blood pressure cuff or a pulse oximetry device where it's measuring the pulsations of blood in your blood vessel, in your wrist or arm to see how fast your heart rate is going. Now, that's not the same thing as who's in control of your heart, what rhythm is in control of your heart. Because whether your normal rhythm is in control or an abnormal source is in control, it's gonna make your heart go at a certain speed. And so those smartwatches that just record heart rate it can't tell you whether your rate is fast because you're in normal rhythm exercising or you're in some kind of abnormal rhythm going fast for doing nothing other than just sitting there. So you have to be careful what you're talking about. Some of the Apple smartwatches actually give you a rhythm tracing. They actually have infrared sensors that actually can sense both the heart rate and then they also are in contact with your skin and so they can sense the electricity as well. And so they can provide almost like a single channel EKG, not 12 leads like a full EKG, but a single channel EKG. And unless you're moving around and there's a lot of artifact, sometimes it's very interpretable. Sometimes it can give me the answer without the person wearing a heart rhythm monitor or some type of thing like that. So atrial fibrillation can actually be detected a lot of times with very advanced smartwatches. Now, is it as good as an EKG? Well, as I said, no, the EKG got 12 little sensors all over your chest. And so it's gonna see it 
more accurately. I'm gonna see multiple channels of electricity. I can really tell directionality. So it's not quite as accurate as that, but it's not bad. And it's certainly a very good screener tool. And it's much more convenient because you're wearing it all the time. Whereas an EKG in your doctor's office, you can only have that when you go in. If you're having symptoms at home, you certainly can't have that. Now, there are other devices like, for example, CardioMobile, these other devices that you can hold the device and actually do a one or two channel EKG. Those are also very useful. Not quite as convenient as a smartwatch that you can wear all the time that's kind of keeping track. So lots of different ways of doing this, but I would say that these types of devices that provide you one or two channels or an Apple watch that provides you one channel of electricity, they're very good screener tools. They're not perfect, but they probably can pick up atrial fibrillation a good 80, 90% of the time. Once again, you get into the same constraints as the EKG computer trying to interpret it. They may say possible atrial fibrillation. That doesn't necessarily mean you do have atrial fibrillation. It should be overread by somebody who's qualified to read this, a cardiologist or an electrical cardiologist, because I have had patients come to me where their Apple Watch kept saying they were an AFib, and it turned out it was just their normal rhythm with having these extra premature beats that made it seem irregular, but it was still the normal rhythm. They were not actually in atrial fibrillation but the watch wasn't sure, and so it said, yeah, AFib or possible atrial fibrillation. So these are good screener devices. I would say that they're most accurate when the AFib is for a prolonged period of time and it's not super duper fast. The faster the speed goes, or the more irregular it is, the more it might not pick up everything and give you an incorrect diagnosis or miss it. Or if it's a very, very short episode, it may not be long enough for it to pick up. But if you had those situations where you're unsure, you feel some weird symptoms, you're not sure whether your Apple Watch is giving you the correct diagnosis on it, it's not picking everything up, it says maybe this, maybe that, the way to actually diagnose this, of course, is either come into the office when you're having symptoms, do an EKG, or do heart rhythm monitors. And as I said, the heart rhythm monitor, you can wear for a prolonged period of time. It stays on your body, it records your heart rhythm for one day, one week, two weeks, four weeks, and then the report gets sent to a cardiologist or cardiac electrophysiologist, whoever ordered it, and we can then interpret those squiggly little lines and actually say what's going on. And it also has lots of useful data, like what range of speeds does your heart go at, and if you are in atrial fibrillation, what percent of time. Now, for people who have very infrequent symptoms, because sometimes people say, hey, I feel these weird palpitations, but they're not all the time. And somebody put a 30-day monitor on me, and they missed it. Then right after I turned it in, I felt palpitations. So how am I gonna make the diagnosis? Well, there is a device called a loop recorder. A loop recorder is specifically invented to make the diagnosis in people who are not having frequent symptoms. And so it's a tiny little device. These days it's very small. It's like the size of my pinky and it has no wires. And we actually put it underneath your skin. It's a very minor procedure. So you just make a little puncture, slip the little device in, almost like putting something underneath your pet skin, except this doesn't ID you. It actually is a mini little computer and it monitors your heart rhythm and records it for up to three to four years. Literally, the battery in this tiny little thing actually lasts three to four years. And if you have any episodes, if it truly is AFib, it'll record it, or you have a handheld monitor device that you can tell it to record. And then we can wirelessly download that information from the device and actually see what's going on and actually get rhythm strips. So a loop recorder is a device that is meant to catch symptoms that are infrequent. Or you sometimes have people who have a stroke and you're worried it might be AFib, but you do a 30-day monitor, you're not really sure, you put a longer-term monitoring, you will know for sure whether they're having AFib and whether they need to be on blood thinners or not. So loop are great devices for these situations. The only caution I give is because they become so easy to put in, sometimes I'm seeing patients where they're having very frequent symptoms, their symptoms are daily or weekly or every other week, and they easily could have had a one or two week monitor or at most a four week monitor and definitely catch their heart rhythm and make the diagnosis. But because somebody gets paid more to put a little loop recorder in, because it's a procedure, they end up getting a loop recorder and two days later, somebody makes a diagnosis and you're thinking, do you really, really need to spend you know, a couple thousand dollars of our healthcare resources to do that when you could have put an inexpensive monitor to get the same result in just a couple days, but people get paid for doing it and that's why some less scrupulous doctors may do that. But the real reason why it was invented was to catch longer infrequent symptoms. So I would say we're living in a great time these days because nowadays we have so many ways of diagnosing your heart rhythm. So if you say I've had palpitations for ages, I never knew what it was, but now I've got a smartwatch, I got a cardio mobile device, somebody puts a loop recorder in, 30 day monitors, 
we will catch your rhythm, we will make the diagnosis, and then we can tell you what's going on and put your mind at ease. And if you really are having atrial fibrillation, we can make that diagnosis and treat you appropriately. For everything atrial fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.